I'm Jonathan Goldstein, and you're listening to Wiretap on CBC Radio 1 and Sirius XM. Today's episode, Watch Your Language. Sunday, 9.30 a.m. My internet is down, and I feel like George Clooney in Gravity, disconnected and adrift. I phone up my provider, and a technical support person answers. And as always, I begin with a hearty, all-Canadian, allo. In Quebec, allo is a useful, all-purpose greeting. When addressing an Anglophone, it sounds like a playful spin on hello, perhaps the way a parrot might say the word. And when addressing a Francophone, it passes for French. In spite of how poor my French is, I do believe that one should at least make an effort. But in this case, almost immediately after my allo, I am placed on hold. Vous êtes le cinquième en ligne. Un représentatif vous répondra sous peu. I was born in Brooklyn, but my family moved to Montreal when I was about four. My parents enrolled me in French immersion classes, and in what seemed like the style of education at the time, I was mercilessly made fun of by my teachers for the bébé la la style of my New York accented French. Eventually, it reached a point where I just stopped trying. Vous êtes le quatrième en ligne. Merci de votre patience. How is it I've learned so little French in my life? I've looked up Roman à clé at least three times over the years, but I'm embarrassed to say I'm still not sure what it is, and barely sure how to pronounce it. Vous êtes le troisième en ligne. My French has improved somewhat over the years. In fact, in my late 20s, I became the French film reviewer for a Montreal alternative English weekly. When the characters on screen would speak too quickly, though, I never could understand very much, and so I'd find myself writing almost exclusively about the film's lighting and mise-en-scène, an expression I still don't really understand. Vous êtes le deuxième en ligne. Because of my verbal limitations, when I speak French, I am more plain-spoken, often relying on sound effects when explaining things. I like French, Jonathan. He is playful, yet to the point. Vous êtes le prochain, en ligne. Sometimes, I'm made sad that my French isn't better. I think that so much of the city's beauty is wasted on me. This is never made more clear than when I'm eating lunch in the CBC Montreal cafeteria and a busload of seniors show up for a tour of the building. As they snap photographs of the people who eat at the same tables as I do, I realize that my fellow lunch companions are Quebec stars, but they are shooting stars that pass behind my back, stars that I, with a face pointed downward aimed at my turkey loaf, completely miss. a.m. The technician comes back onto the line, and I explain my problem in French. She answers me in English. Then, we both slip into a half-and-half kind of thing. You have to recommence the modem, she says. Ah, okay, I say. Parce que c'était tout... 9.39 a.m. I get off the phone, hit restart, and reconnect to the world. First stop in my internet surfing, allocine.com, to find a good French film to watch. Gravité, perhaps. Hello. Hi. Oh, hey, Howard. How, how are you doing? Not good. I'm not doing good at all. I'm sorry to hear that. What? Mm-hmm. What? Uh, what's going on? 
I don't even know if I can even talk about this. Okay. I guess when you're ready to talk, then... Do I sound a little different to you at all? Mm. No? I sound no. like my voice is clear? Pretty much. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Do I sound like I have eyebrows? Because I don't have eyebrows. Do you know what emotion I'm conveying right now to you, Jonathan? Well, it sounds like, like anger. Is it? How would I know if I'm angry, if I don't have eyebrows to tell me that I'm angry? Well, I can't see your eyebrows, Howard, because... Well, I can't the... see my eyebrows anymore either, John, because I don't have eyebrows any longer. What? I don't understand. What are you... Your eyebrows just fall off? Well, that's a manly way to lose your eyebrows. I guess. Did something happen with those teenage boys that bully you at the convenience store you go to? It's ribbing. It's playful ribbing. They steal your groceries. They're like... poor. I let them take them. All right. Well, I, I still would like to talk to their parents. No. They're going to think I'm a daddy's boy. All right. Don't. Let's oh. just focus on the eyebrows. I have no eyebrows. All right. Why don't you have eyebrows? As you know, every Wednesday, I go get my nails done. You go to get your nails done. Since I was a kid, I go to the Korean salon. To get your fingernails. And toenails. And that's the first thing a woman's going to look at. So hygiene's very important to you. Yes, hygiene's very important to me. And, w- and when was the last time you got your hair cut? Well, my head hair's been a while. And when, w- when was the last time you even shaved? When was the last time I was at your house, because that's when I used your electric razor. And, and when was the last time you showered? What are you trying to say? You're trying to say I'm dirty? No, I'm just saying that I, it's odd that you are so obsessed with your nails. When... It, it, it's not about cleanliness or about... It, it's about feeling good. All right. So you have a standing appointment at the Korean nail salon. I've been seeing Mrs. Kim, and, and she's the one that does my nails. She's mm-hmm. always done my nails. But, but this is the lady... That, there was a lady there. I never, I've never seen her before. Mm-hmm. So they assigned her to me. And then I guess, I don't know. And, you know, it's a very relaxing place. There's soft music. And so I just close my eyes and I just let the magic happen. But, but like, I woke up, and my nails were still dirty. And I didn't know what was going on, and I, and, I, and I turned around to speak to her, and I was right in front of the mirror, and she, they whacked off my eyebrows. Is that a service that they offer? I don't know. All I know is I went in to get my nails done, and I came out with no eyebrows, and my nails weren't done. They didn't even do your... They didn't even they end up... They didn't even do my nails. So they gave me a voucher for a free nail thing, but, I mean, who's going to look at my nails when they're going to be looking at my stupid, crazy face? I look like Casper. I'm saying, you know, Casper the ghost? That's what I look like. I, do. I don't look like a friendly ghost. I look like the creepy, unsettling ghost. Can I ask you something? I can't be angry. I can't turn my fan upside down. I can't say, what? With my eyebrows all... Because I have no eyebrows. All, all right. So, so walk me through it. What happened exactly? Uh, there's this like, routine. So it starts off with a little bit, with, like, a little bit of a hand massage, and then, then they give me the nice tea, and then, you know, and so everything they offer, I would just say yes, right? So in Korean, it's, it's ung or, or uh. Right? You so speak what? Korean? Just nail salon Korean. Huh. You know? like, I guess I was just saying yes to everything. So it's like they offer me tea, and I go, oh. Then they put cucumbers on my eyes. I'm like, oh. And everything she said, I would just keep saying yes, 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 oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, yes, 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 you know. And I guess she must have asked me if I want to have my eyebrows removed, and I didn't, just didn't realize I just said yes. Does that make sense to you? Is this one what an adult man should be experiencing in his mid-40s, walking around no eyebrows because he was doing to have his nails done? I don't think so. And they start going, nyan, nyan, which is, I'm sorry. And me, I, I say, I say, go mawa. What does that mean? Thank you. You thank them for shaving up. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know what I was, I was thanking them. I don't know. Okay, so, so she, so she removed your eyebrows. Well, what do you mean? Okay, so she removed your no, eyebrows. No, I'm just, I'm trying to oh, just... Like, okay, so... Okay, no, I'm not... You have no feet. I'm not minimizing it. I'm just, I'm reiterating... I'm, I'm humiliated. I look like a snowball. Look, this is terrible, but, I mean, your, your eyebrows, they will grow back. I have no idea if they will. I've tried a few things in the meantime, some grease paint, and I tried a Sharpie marker, but the only way to go is an eyebrow transplant. What, what are you talking about? Well, I need an eyebrow transplant. That's why I'm calling you. Howard, I don't believe there's such a thing as an eyebrow transplant. There most absolutely is such a thing as an eyebrow transplant. So what, they're going to take some hair from your leg and put it on your eyebrow? I, no, I they're going to take hair from your shoulders. I want that thick, luxurious shoulder hair, that mane you Howard, have. Howard, I do not have hairy shoulders. Jonathan, they're like epaulettes. You, you, you look like a general in the marching band. Howard, you have big, full, shaggy shoulders. Howard, I am not participating in this. All I need is a strip of skin and hair from your shoulder. Skin and hair? Yeah, it's got to be a skin graft. 
and hopefully my forehead won't reject it. Howard, I don't think there's a doctor in the world who would do so- an operation like this. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about doctors. This isn't a doctor. This, they, just, they do this at the nail salon. The, the place that shaved your eyebrows. And it's a full-service kind of place. Anything on eyebrow. Uh, all it's going to need is a strip of your hair or two strips and, and $10,000. Ten? Are you kidding me? What do you suggest? I suggest you wait. You want me to wait three, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks for my eyebrow hair to go back. You're a savage. You have one new mail. Subject, Joanne's contract. Sent to all staff. Hello there. Could you please draft up a new contract for Joanne Stewart? Beginning next week, she'll be acting as project manager for the Lakeview account. Sincerely, Beverly HR. New mail. Re, Joanne's contract. To all staff. Hey Beverly, not sure why I'm receiving this email. I don't know who this Joanne person is. Maybe I've been placed on this mailing list by mistake. I'd love it if you could take me off when you get a chance. Thanks. Signed, Jim. New mail. Same goes for me. Please remove me from this list. I haven't worked here for years. Seems like you accidentally sent this to all staff. It doesn't concern the sales department whatsoever. Bill here. Since when are we hiring a new project manager? Am I being fired? Please don't reply all guys. Thanks. No, seriously, am I being fired? What the hell? Please stop replying all people. It was clearly just a mistake. Unsubscribe me, please. Why is Joanne getting promoted? I've been here way longer than her. LOL. Another reply all gone awry. This is just like that time we got over 100 reply alls to Tyson's retirement party invite. What retirement party? Why was I not invited? Hey all, please just click on the reply tab and deselect reply all. My inbox is flooding. If you hate reply all so much, why are you replying all? Um, if you're replying all just to tell me not to reply all, you can go f*** yourself. For crying out loud, if the email isn't for you, just ignore it. Hey, this is Joanne. Who am I supposed to see about the contract? Same person you've been seeing since April. Wink. What's that supposed to mean? The horrid affair. <laughs> Tom. We all saw you guys at the Christmas party. What Christmas party? Just because I work in the basement doesn't mean I don't occasionally like to come up for air. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. I'm attaching a screen grab showing you people how to just reply directly to the sender instead of replying all. I can't open the attachment. I think I may have been included on this email by mistake. Best, Ashley. Oh, hey, Ashley. How's the weather up on the sixth floor? You can't just fire me like this. I've got a baby on the way. You're all a bunch of sexist pigs. You think I'd sleep my way to the middle? Bill's been running this project into the ground for months. I resent that. Well, at least Bill wears deodorant to work. Hashtag, am I right? That's not deodorant he wears. It's a gallon of cologne, and it gives us all migraines. hey Gif of a high five. 30 replies and counting. Let's set a new record. Did anybody leave their cell phone in the third floor washroom? I just found one by the sink. You know what, Joanne? I'm glad I'm getting fired, because at least I won't have to listen to another one of your pointless potty training stories around the lunch table. Get a life. Please stop replying all. Oh, I have a life. Unlike you, who shows up to work at 6.30 in the morning because his wife can't stand having him in the house for another second. Hey guys, I think you sent me this by accident maybe? Rainbow emoji. Excuse me, if I like to get to work early so I can have my coffee in peace before you stink up the place with your disgusting fish burritos. Haven't you read the office guide book? No fish in the microwave. I wish you'd stick your head in the microwave and kill yourself already. Could you remove me from this list, please? Thanks, Emil. Would you please stop replying all? Some of us are actually trying to get some work done around here. For the, for the love of God. I'm sorry, everyone. I was on a conference call and I'm just getting all these replies now. I was trying to send the original note to Business Affairs. My apologies for the error. Bill, Joanne isn't replacing you. You'll both be working together as co-project managers. Please join me, everyone, in wishing Bill and Joanne the best of luck and congratulating Joanne on her promotion. 
Sincerely, Beverly HR. Yay, congratulations. Smiley face emoji. Bill and Joanne, the dream team. Congratulations, Joanne. You deserve it. Way to go, Joanne. Well done, Joanne. You got this. You guys are the best. Way to go, Joanne. Awesome. Congratulations, guys. So what's everyone doing after work tonight? Anyone want to hang out? Can someone please unsubscribe me from this f***ing mailing list? I retired in 2001. Johnny. Oh, hey, Gregor. Hey. Johnny, I I come to you with a problem and a solution. Can I have the solution first? Problem is, Mm -hmm. you're getting old. Well, I mean, I guess we all are. No, but you more than most. You're decaying, Johnny. You're visibly decaying. So I I start to think to myself, what's the solution? Mm -hmm. Now, there's only one real solution. Uh, You die. But the reason I called you mm -hmm. is I was thinking... What can I do with this shriveled old prune of a client? You know, I have an advantage with you that I don't have with all my other clients who are getting Restylane and Botox and plugs and all this stuff. Nobody knows what you look like. That is a part of the, the beauty of working in radio. I... Well, yes, it is. But you, like every other old person, talks like an old person. Your diction, your words you use, the words you speak. And you don't realize it because you're all old. What, and you don't talk that way? Of course not. You have so, no idea what I'm up to, Johnny. I, I guess I don't. I'm on Snapchat, Yik Yak, Talk Monkey, I'm on Yelp. But the point is, the reason I can slip into the crowd unnoticed by these young people is because I speak their language. What, what do you, how do you mean? I am calling you to teach you slang so that you can fit in. Slang? Yeah, the way young people talk. And you're going to teach it to me? Yes, well, you got age spots clogging up your ears. Yes, I'm calling to teach you slang. What don't you understand? Well, I, is, it, is it too late for you? Should I call you earlier in the day? Well, it's only 12 o'clock. What, do you take your nap now? What's well, the matter with you? I, I mean, it's just, isn't there a risk of sounding a little foppish? You know who says foppish? People in the English court in the 18th century. You work it into your monologues. Instead of being like, Monday, my toaster still is not popping up my toes. Okay. Tuesday. Still waiting for my toast to pop. Couldn't sleep all night waiting for my toast. What could be wrong with my toaster? All right, what do you have to teach me? All right, let's say you get dressed up. Mm -hmm. That's what's known as putting on the Ritz. Putting on the Ritz. Yeah, you know the Ritz Hotel in Paris? Yeah, but you know, putting on the Ritz. Try and say it. Say it like this. I'm putting on the Ritz. Putting on the Ritz is something... Okay, now you're on the trolley. Okay. You know what that means? Uh, I'm getting it right. Yeah, now you've got it. That's right, Mrs. Grundy. You know what Mrs. Grundy means? What? Tightly laced person, such as yourself. Do you know, you're using slang, though, like that goes back to Fred Astaire putting on the Ritz. That's not young people talk. Horse feathers. No, all, everything you're talking is, is 1920s talk. I think you're high on giggle water, my friend. That means you're drunk. Johnny, I know it's from the 1920s, and you know what? what? The 2020s are coming around, and every generation wants to be 100 years behind the times. I never heard happened of that. happened in the 60s. The 1860s were very progressive. They were dropping acid in the horse troughs and digging the paisley grooves. They were like, far out, man. And then they'd shoot you the blunderbuss because they were so high on patchouli oil. Well, I mean... You know what went on in the 1890s? What? Grunge. People were very grungy. Mm-hmm. Johnny, the 20s are coming back in a big way. We've got five years to get you ready. Mm-hmm. We're going to make you the bee's knees if it kills me. We're going to make you the hit of Tin Pan Alley, you wet blanket. But I don't buy this. You're quite the fire extinguisher. 20s are coming back, Johnny, and with it, the cat's pajamas. So your cat is going to be wearing pajamas, and don't you start it with this whole thing about I don't have a cat, because that cat is getting pajamas. Maybe we get you pajamas, and we put a cat there. You have a cat in your pajamas. Hello. This is Jonathan? Yes, it is. I'm talking on the telephone to the one who talks on the telephone. Uh, yeah, uh, who, who is this? My name is Masha, and uh. I'm phoning from all Russia state radio broadcasting. We play Russian version of your radio program. I, yeah, I'd, I'd heard that the CBC had licensed out international versions of the show. Yes, I'm producer of the show. Isn't that something? The the Russian wiretap. In Russia, we call it Koncert Nichtoznych Nitikov. 
Uh, which, which is, uh, what does and, that mean? Uh, the, the sad little tiny Jew crying on the telephone spectacular. Uh-huh. Just like your show, with monologues and all the whole gang. Uh, like, um, Monday. Landlady shot my dog and got blood on my pants. But I hate these pants. So good my dog is dead. I can throw pants in toilet. Tuesday, landlady shot my new dog. Very entertaining. That sounds great. And of course, we have all the same characters. Oh, yeah? Gregor is very popular. We love him. Uh He says to you, stupid Kazol, why were you born? Stop your crying. There is work to be done. Yeah, that, that, uh, that sounds pretty much like Canadian, Gregor. Yes, very funny. And you also have Howard? Ah, Vladislav. His uh, his name is Vladislav? But just like Howard, he call up and say, give me some money. Please, please, give me some money. (laughs) Right. Yeah, that that sounds like Howard, all right. And you say, I can't give you no money. Get job, you lazy piece of brivno. He says, Uh, you will give it. I am starving. I not eat in four days. (laughs) <laughs> Very funny. Because uh, Vladislav's uh, lying, right? No, he's starving to death. And you hang up phone and tell him to go to hell. Uh-huh. And are, are my parents on the show, too? Mama Bear fall from window on the third episode. Now there's only Papa Bear left. Wait, what do you mean? My, my parents are bears? Yes, bears have an important role in Moscow circus. And Papa Bear has to wear chains on his throat because he always tries to bite you. He hates being on the radio. I, I have to say, uh, that you know, that doesn't seem funny to me at all. Your show is not funny. Broken people complain about broken lives, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, I, I mean, I would like to think that my show offers a little bit more than that. You know, there's Let's a... Let's make like the Duhani. What, what does that mean? At the end of the show, like how all your conversations end, when everyone's yelling at each other and, uh, you know, the fade out. I, w- I want to try that with the original man. Well, I mean, it's not as simple as that. Sometimes, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't quite end that way. I go first. You stinking, dirty mushchinka. You sicken me. Okay, hey. Bad human being. All right, that's... Put the music right here. Hey, what? You filthy toilet. Hey, come on. Indyuk, malasolny, ahrenevsi babkin vnuk. That's enough. I'm not a babkin. Ahrenevsi babkin vnuk. On Wiretap today, you heard Howard Chakowitz, Yana Melnikova, and Gregor Ehrlich. Reply All, an office tale told through email, was written by Mira Bertwintonic. Special thanks to our colleagues at CBC Montreal and to our friends at the Toronto Radio Club for lending it their voices. Wiretap is produced by Mira Bertwintonic, Crystal Duhame, and me, Jonathan Goldstein. Tune into Wiretap Saturdays at 3.30 and Thursday evenings at 11.30. You can also hear Wiretap across North America on Sirius XM or subscribe to the podcast at cbc.ca slash wiretap, where you can also download the latest Wiretap ringtone. Haven't you read the Office Guidebook? No fish in the microwave. Keep your coworkers in line with every ring of your phone.